Hello and welcome! We're gonna go travel to the 80s and talk about one of the most unknown recent Disney films of this time, The Black Cauldron. Legend has it, in the mystic land of Bredain, there was once a king so cruel and so evil that even the gods feared him. Since no prison could hold him, he was thrown alive into a crucible of molten iron. There, his demonic spirit was captured in the form of a great black cauldron. For uncounted centuries, the black cauldron lay hidden, waiting, while evil men searched for it, knowing whoever possessed it would have the power to resurrect an army of deathless warriors. And with them, Rule the world. It was the first Disney anime feature to receive a PG rating, and it was the most expensive film that they made for their time. The Black Cauldron was released in 1985, so it's the most recent of these endeavors in its relation to it being the most unknown. <laughs> When it was released in theaters, it was a massive, massive flop. It almost cost the studio the entire animation department. It held a budget of 44 million, and it only made 21.3 million at the box office. So clearly, this film did not do well at all. And that's another reason I was really curious to watch it. I know I never saw it before, and I grew up close to that time, but even though it was released in 85, it didn't get released into home video until 1998. So there was a lot more impressive films that came out between that time. And I think if anything, it has more of a cult status, but I'm not sure about that. I haven't done the research on it, but I knew that it was a really big failure and it is one of the most darkest of the Disney films. And I was really curious to check it out. Now that I watched it, I don't think it's that terrible a film. The animation's still great, the plot, there's a great plot to it, and it makes sense most of the time, but there's no depth to it, there's no emotion, and I didn't care about any of the characters. It didn't feel like a Disney film to me. It seemed more like a dumb, dumb blunt film, honestly, the way it was drawn, and I was surprised that Disney did this. If I didn't know when I saw it, I would assume that it would be either a 20th Century Fox picture or even DreamWorks. Oh yeah! <laughs> Taryn is in charge of this magical pig, Hedwin, and he is supposed to protect Hedwin from the Horn King who knows that she has magical powers and can let him know where this black cauldron that can create doom and chaos is. He does not do his job well. Everything that happens in this film is his fault. And yet, at the end, he's still hero. I know there can be an argument at the same time <laughs> with Marvel Avengers that everything they do is their fault and if they weren't around, none would happen in the first place. It's kind of the same scenario here, where yeah, there's a villain, but if they didn't do certain things, then they wouldn't be in trouble in the first place, and it's really bad, but I was hoping that all the characters in this film would die. I wouldn't care. <laughs> that shows you that it's not like a typical emotional film, and animation-wise it's great, like I said, but there's just no depth, there's no emotion, there's none of that. You have your animal sidekick that I'm not sure if he's a monkey or if he's a dog or whatnot, but Gurgi is his name. I think it was hard to hear even throughout the film. It's something with Gurg something. I don't like him. I think he's very annoying. And he's like this weird mixture between Stitch and Donald Duck with his voice. Hey, no you don't. I didn't give you that apple. You took it. Ow! Hey, hold on you hairy little thief. Come back with my apple. If you don't give it back, you'll be sorry. I mean it. 
I'm warning you. Give it back. He claims that he has no friends, even though all he wants is his apple. And then there's scenes went on way too long and with that. And then he ends up trying to just follow them. And at the end, he decides to sacrifice himself to be the hero. Like, they're, you barely know these people. It's a weird set of characters and nothing really seems to fit together correctly. It's not the worst film, but it's not the best either. It's just meh. And the animation honestly is the best part about it. And animation is great, but without a fantastic story and without any emotion to said story, then there's not really much you can go with it. So I understand why it was a failure. I don't have any arguments against why it's a failure, because I can see it. It's still something to enjoy, especially if you are interested in that time frame and are curious about things. It's a decent film to watch. It's not terrible to watch. Um, but it compared to Disney, that's the thing too. If this was 20th Century Fox or something else, I could see this would be a pretty decent film. But because it is under Disney and because Disney has given us so many high quality, fantastic, 100% films, having this come out does not compare to the rest of their library and that's what it stems down to. So it's not terrible, but it's not the best, especially what they've given us. Tomorrow, we're gonna be taking a look at another terrible film. <laughs> Tomorrow's film is pretty terrible and I'm so excited for it. We're gonna be talking about Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> so stay tuned. <laughs> and as always, I hope you have a magical day and I will see you real soon.